Hi there! Do you want to learn Power Automate and simplify your workflows? In this video, I will share one of the lessons from my Power Automate module on my Udemy course. If you want to access the complete course, check the pinned comment below or become a channel member to unlock all the lessons. Let's get started! Hi there! Now let's talk about connectors. We already saw that in Power Apps when we connected to Excel or SharePoint. In the same way, we use connectors to connect to services and data sources in Power Automate. I just took this screenshot from my Power Automate interface when I was going to create an action inside Power Automate. In there, we have hundreds of connectors, even more than a thousand, to connect to. The list is very big and we have in the documentation the list of all of the connectors that we can use in Power Automate. Most of them, we don't even know the service, but if you use any of these services in your company, know that you can connect to them. We have connectors from other vendors, as we can see here in the screen, in this list of connectors, that's very big. I can scroll until the end. We have hundreds of rows and this grows every day. And we have also Microsoft connectors to the services that we know on our daily basis. For example, as we can see here, we have Excel, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Teams. We also have connection to the Outlook email, SharePoint, and so on. The list is very big. And as we can see here, these connectors allow you to automate workflows across different platforms. You can connect the platforms and make them communicate, which is very good. Now, there is one differentiation between the connectors. We have standard and premium connectors. As you can see here in the print screen, we have premiums and we have those that don't have anything. The standard connectors are already included in most of the Power Automate plans. For example, if you have a Microsoft 365 account and you have access to Power Automate, you can use the standard connectors without any additional costs. But there are premium connectors that require more licensing. For example, connecting to Salesforce, SQL Server, or Microsoft Dataverse. Usually the databases require this premium plan and you need to pay more to use that. But with the standard plan, we can already build a lot of cool stuff to automate our daily tasks. I will leave a link in the lesson material where you can see the list of connectors. One thing that's very important when you're going to build some automation is to know the connectors limitations, for example. So you could go to the list of connectors Let's say, for example, Outlook, Outlook. And then you can see the connector details, see how it works. For example, this Outlook connector can be used on Power Automate and Power Apps in the standard mode. So it, it doesn't cost anything else. It's published by Microsoft. And then we have a lot of information about this connector here, how it works. And the thing that's important to know are the limitations. So we have this session that has the known issues and limitations that you can read. And then we have also throttling limits, for example, the number of API calls that we can do per minute. Because even though we have this connector here, it doesn't mean that we can use it to send thousands of emails at once. So it's very important to at least read and know the limitations if you are going to do a project that's more than you can do manually. So it's good to know and read the documentation about the connectors that we are going to use. That's my recommendation here. Now in the next lesson, I'm going to talk a little bit more about limits and present other information about Power Automate limits that's important to know. See you in there. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member or purchasing the course, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.